All right, here we go, people. <laughs> this is Tim with the Word of Life Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Junior Mount on behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation, and myself. <laughs> I want to offer you an open invitation to come out and be with us for service. I'm going to give you our service times. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m. We come back at 6 p.m. for our evening service, and we also have midweek service Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, this week we kind of had a little bit of a uh, change in service times because of the uh, uptick in the, or a little bit of rise <laughs> in the uh, COVID numbers, uh, but we're hoping to go ahead and uh, open back up Sunday morning, just kind of have to wait and see. It, it's, you know, you really don't know what to do, and you know, if you're a pastor of a church, you try to be as careful as you can and we understand that and uh, you know we support our pastor and the decisions that he makes and everything uh, but we also true we trust in the power of God amen we trust that he'll protect us he's got his hands on us so we uh, look forward to getting back as soon as possible and uh, in the meantime we're just still praying haven't lost faith by no means in the power of God we see many miracles still going on we see God moving in many other miraculous ways and just like before when they started all this stuff when we when the first round come through and all the churches stopped having actual services in the church buildings we saw that it didn't stop the church, right? So, you know, same thing. <laughs> it's no big, you know. Hey, we're still doing. We'll stay. We we'll still do videos. We still do online services. People are still doing online services that are back in their church buildings. So, you know, if anything good come out of that, it's actually these people are still doing online services because that reaches out see it showed people that that is a very effective tool to use to to reach other people that can't get out and go to the house of God that's maybe sick and shut in and but also people that have sworn off going to church for whatever reason and we've talked about that and I know you know I've talked about and you know you don't want to be too harsh on people that say well I've been hurt in church before and you can say many reasons for that and I, I, I still want to say to people that say that don't use that as a crutch don't use that as an excuse not every church is going to be that way and if a church has done that to you on behalf of those churches I, I'm sorry no church should be that way a church a body of believers should be showing love towards you now we've got to uphold the word of God and his statutes and uphold the integrity integrity of the word of God and his laws and, his, and everything you know we have to do that so uh, you know that that's just part of it so if you're mad because of something that 
someone has done according to the will of God by the word of God and you got mad at that then I can't really you know I'm not going to apologize for that because it's it was because of the word of God you got mad at and then you need to have a little talk <laughs> you just a little talk with Jesus amen you need to have you need to have a talk with the Lord because but if, if it's something just something that man has done and believe me I know I get it something just something a man has done or one is it just because of running this that tongue you know being the most dangerous to most venomous most poisonous member of the body or person of the body which it is but they just ran it then and, and said something did something then yeah that's it's not good you see that all too often and uh the person doesn't apologize for that they'll they'll be held accountable for that they will uh rest assured but don't let that stop you don't let that stop you from seeking out a good congregation of believers because uh you don't have to sit there and be be alone you, you know you, there there are other churches and congregations out there that are that are good that are following the word of God that will welcome you in and help you uh, and that will follow the word of God but th if they follow the word of God and you commit to that you're following too if, don't get mad when they're following the word of God and you have to submit to that I'm not saying submit to the will of a man or, or a woman just in there in the flesh you have to submit to the Word of God. Get where I'm coming from, okay? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Uh, because that's what we have to do. We have to give ourselves over to the will of God. So I say that when we come to the altar, Jesus gave his life for us. So we, in turn, when we get saved, we give our life over to him. We give it back to him. Just, it's just right. Give it right back. We, he gave his life for us. We give our life right back over to him to serve him in the beauty of holiness. Amen. To walk in his will. To try to gain others. To lead help and lead others. To get them on that narrow way. To life everlasting. Amen. Oh, it's such a wonderful way. Amen. Uh, if you hear noise in the background, I'm sure you can see right here <laughs> a fan going on kind of in a room that's a little bit warm and uh, you see the wind over here the sun coming in so i apologize <clears throat> i'm trying not to yell ain't really yell still dealing with sciences so uh, uh be bear with me uh so anyway i just wanted to say that that felt like that was on my heart and know known some people that have been out of the house of god because of certain reasons and uh uh, I hate to see it because I feel like it was because of stuff that man has done uh, just out of their own flesh and that's not right but like I said if it was for the word of God and the person just didn't want to submit to the will of God that's a different story so and we have to do that we're to come in to you know in agreement with the word of God we have to do that we have to submit to the Word of God and His will, especially once we come, uh, we give it our life back over to Him uh, through the gift of salvation. Amen. And, you know, it said his, his yoke is easy and His burden is light. It's not like we're under a whip and servitude or anything. Hey, no, it's joyful to serve the Lord. Amen. It's, it's, it's a joy to walk each and every day in His will. I mean, I'm not going to have issues, not going to have problems, you know, as we say. As we heard it always talk about, it's not going to be a rose bush that we're going to walk every single day and not have issues, not have problems, not have the enemy come upon us and attack us. No, and, you know, don't think, just because I say that, don't think, oh, that's, that's oppressing. No, don't let that, because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to come and oppress, depress you. You know, if he can't possess you, because you are possessed of the Lord. Amen. And he said he'll never leave you. Never forsake you. He'd be with you to the end of the world. Or to the end of the age. It says. 
Hallelujah. We just thank the Lord for all he's doing. Uh, all he's done. All he's going to do. Amen. Continue to pray for Sister Sheila, my wife. She's being tested for, uh, I, I guess she wouldn't mind me saying this, she's being tested for COVID. She went into the doctor because she's been having, you know, been she's been sick. Now she's feeling fine right now, but just because they're having to do this, they're having to test her. So she's here being stir crazy, <laughs> ready to get out. And we're still waiting on the results. Hopefully, it'll, not st hopefully it'll be tomorrow. It's they're making her wait, and uh, I think they're doing. They're n not the doctors in general. I think it's the whole powers that be. They're doing this. They're making people wait full five days. As, as they're making them wait as long as they possibly can on purpose. So, whether you're being conspiratorial, it, you know how I feel about that word. Okay, so no, let's not even go there. <laughs> Because that you know it's it's a time of, with all this going on with the new stimulus package and you know everything and all the money behind it and all the jobs and the employee insurance and the election and all that and everything. So it doesn't surprise me that they're trying to push numbers and pad numbers and it's just it's a mess. Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows what to do. That's why we, as Christians, hallelujah, we we got our faith in the Lord. You know, and here lately, and and, and we're going to talk about a little bit just about, and along comes the, and along comes the spirit of fear. And fearful times. We'll talk a little bit about that today. But you know, whew, thinking about it, getting chills just thinking. About it. We have to get to the point, my my my, that we can look at the the gaping mouth of chaos. Well, let's bypass fear. Let's look, let's look beyond fear. Let's look, let's look at the at the at the at the at the, at the, at the swirling mass of chaos, or the the huge mouth of teeth of, of coming out of, of just chaos and anarchy, and still be able seniors have fallen into that, and still say, God's got His hand on me. Whatever's going to come. It's going to come. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens to me. It doesn't matter what happens to me. I'm in the Father's hand. I'm going to heaven. If I fall into that swirly mass of chaos, the Father's got his hand on me. I know where my eternity's going to lie. Ooh, man. Come on now. <laughs> That ain't give you chill bumps thinking about that. Thinking about how secure you are in Christ. Okay, yeah, I believe I, I believe in eternal security. Well, you stay in it. You don't walk away. If you turn away and reject Christ, yeah, you, you can do it. He'll, he'll let you. Don't know why you would ever want to do that. Amen. Stay in a protective hand of God. But look, you can look, <laughs> look at that. Because oh, you can look at the world and see like the world is just in... Oh, chaos! Look at the big, huge. What is? You may, see, you may see that video in what was it Beirut of that huge explosion. You know, it showed that, and it showed these little mini explosions. And my thoughts about all that, but we won't go into that today. And all of a sudden, the huge explosion, and then the other phew, huge explosion. Of course, the official narrative is well, that was a fertilizer. It was a Russian tanker ship full of fertilizer. Well, <laughs> we won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> that is what the mainstream, lamestream news is saying. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, see that going, and, 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 man, a lot cars. I mean, way far away 
and it, you could just, I mean, and it, they're looking, driving. All of a sudden, when it goes off, the car windows ex just explode. People far away in buildings, and it showed it way far away. When it exploded, the wind is shattered. You talk about a blast. Chaos. <laughs> we think of, you know, talking about peace, peace, and then sudden destruction come upon the land, and, you know, that the enemy, what he wants, you know, he would want, you know, the enemy was cut loose right now, he would rip through the land, and that's what he wants to, what he really wants to do. <laughs> but thank the Lord, the restrainer is in place, amen. He can't do everything that he wants to do, not yet. At one point, his restrainer is going to be taken out of the way, and then he's going to be allowed to do for a season to attack the church like never before how you stand it so you would have many out there saying oh when there's strangers we're going to be taken out of here you know then that's when you know the, you know we're not going to see wrath and everything we're not going to see the wrath of God but whoa hang on now talks about those that come up through great tribulation Ready, tribulation, saints. I will stand and go under the wrath and the chaos of the devil any day before I want to stand for the wrath of God. That's why you better have your sins under the blood and ready to go at any time. Amen. My, my, my. <laughs> Think about it. Get into a little bit of a, and I kind of jumped in, I guess, probably where I shouldn't have, <laughs> but it was to help a fellow, fellow brother, because he was in a little bit of a debate with someone over someone else's ministry, saying this guy's ministry was a fake and don't believe him because he was preaching that you can lose your salvation, and you know after you become saved I was like well the Bible says there are ways that you can it's like if you've studied the Word of God out you should know this it's no big surprise doesn't mean you go seeking out <laughs> the ways to do it because you don't want to but you know of course it come down to you know getting you know being accused of cherry-picking verses and the guy doing the same thing and at one point you just got to drop out and say look you know no matter what you're going to believe what you're going to believe and you know you try to help you try to show people you know you don't want to argue you want to come and you know talk things over and you know share and say well you know the Bible says this and these times are coming and you want people to, that's part of what we're talking about I want people to understand that these times these chaotic times that are upon us the things the Lord said that was going to come upon the land they are here people it said that we're seeing it like it seems like a movie plan we're seeing these things come to pass right before our very eyes You know, how many of us? What if? What if? What if? Comes down to the point that you know, I'm just saying, what if? Okay, I'm not saying this is how it's going to go. I'm saying, what if this happens this way with this virus or the next phase or next level of this virus? More to come, probably. goes into overdrive and they finally come up with a vaccine so they're stifling the med that seems to be helping with this virus because why because they want people to take a vaccine full of a bunch of junk 
including human or fetal tissue. If that doesn't make you mad right there, then I don't know what will. But a bunch of other junk in it. Even to the point of even fundamentally changing the very your very DNA, your body. Let's start requiring your children take this. You know, for schools, for anything. What are you going to do? Well, if they say before you go in anywhere, before you go out anywhere, before you come back to your job, you're going to have to take this vaccine. So, brother, you're scaring me to death. I'm just looking at the possibilities of what's going to happen. See, the enemy, that's what he's going to try to do. So that's why we got to have, we have got to have the Spirit of God in us right now, right this minute, 5.37 p.m. of 8.6 of 2020, right now, to be saved, full of the Spirit of God, ready to be offered up if need be. Amen. Because you don't know when it's going to be time. And the Lord says, it's time to take a stand and say, no. And it may not be just what I'm saying. It may be some, totally something else. We've seen people that's not been wearing a mask along with this, but that they have getting mobbed. These people say, why are you not wearing a mask? And they'll, they'll, they'll come and they'll, they will attack this person and beat, beat the person half to death. Some they have beat to death over not wearing this mask. Over not wearing a mask. Are you ready? Let's go to the verse most commonly that has been used right now so many times I almost I almost don't want to repeat it and that's I guess that's wrong because it's 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 the word of God it needs to be repeated amen but I've, I've said it I heard it said so many times but it still stands listen to this and it oh and, and more I think about it more it, I know it needs to be repeated second Timothy 1 and 7 for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Have the spirit of fear to be for to look, be able, like I said, to look at that swirly mass of chaos and say, come on. If I fall into you, if I fall into this black hole of chaos, it doesn't matter because the Lord has got me in his hand. And if that's it for me, then that's it. I'm just going home. Hallelujah. No spirit of fear, but of power. Love. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Could you do that? Man, this asking some hard questions. These people beating you if you don't, they don't have a mask on or you don't have a, a vaccine. All of a sudden these people come up and grab you by your arms and, and these uh, uh, SWAT team style uniforms and uh, saying, okay, come on, let's go. You're not taking, a, not taking a vaccine. Here we go, let's go. We're taking you. Possibilities. Can you just say, okay, that's the way it's going to go down. People, we know stuff like this is coming. We have been talking about this, preaching about this, teaching about this. People before me, the preachers before me, before the ones, ones before me have been preaching about this all the way back. But look at to the back to the time when right after, hey, hey, Jesus foretold all this is coming 
Don't take it. We're not unawares. We're just seeing these things come to pass. But people have the are, are in the kingdom mindset down here. I've built too much here. I've got too much here. I don't want to leave it. I don't want to leave this stuff. I got all this stuff down here. No, I don't want to leave it. Either way, you're going to. Doesn't matter. Is it so important to you that you want to lose your soul in the end? Is it that important? Is that car? Is that house? Is that boat? Is that all that money you got set back in the retirement fund? Is it so important to you that you want to lose your soul in the end? Gain the whole world, but in the end, but in the end lose your soul. Another one fear that we're to have. Isaiah eleven two. Isaiah eleven verse two. It says, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. That's what we all need right now during these times. It said the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Who is that talking about? It's talking about the Lord Jesus. Amen. We're to have the fear of God. Amen. Don't fear him who can only... This is what we're talking about. This is what we're just, just thinking about right now. Don't fear the things of the world. Don't fear the enemy who's coming to attack you. Because he can only take this right here. This stuff right here. We know this is going nowhere. It's going back to the dust it was pulled out of, created out of. Miraculous as that was, it's going right back. We're getting a glorified body. Amen. That's what we're waiting for. That's what we said. We're not building the kingdom. We're not building our kingdoms down here. Well, some are. So, brother, you're just jealous because you just live in this little house and it ain't going to be. No. We're not even, it doesn't matter a mansion. What do, I need, what do I need a mansion down here for? Why do I need so much money that I'll be worried day and night losing sleep that something's going to happen to all that money and believe me I've seen people that are like that so mad they can't stand it and so defensive that they just like look at you like what are you looking at me for on the phone screaming and yelling even screaming and yelling throughout I worked in when I used to do plumbing a long time ago me in the people's house they had so much money didn't know what to do with it some of the most angriest people that I've ever been around. Miserable. Right to death. That money that they have is going to... The Bible talks about it. It's about wings and fly away if you trust in it. No, we're to feel God who can fear God who can destroy both soul and body. Get an L fire. Isaiah 59 and 19. This is some of the verses going through here. It says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Amen. It says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Whoo, hallelujah. Look, look at the enemy right in the face. Look at that spiral. Look at that, that tornado of chaos coming at you and say Lord I know you're lifting up a standard against anything that can come against me doesn't mean it's not going to come against you doesn't mean that you're going to start going into it and swirling into it God's got you surrounded I can give you victory against all that amen But sometimes the greatest victories of 
the men of God in the Bible ended in their passings. Enoch walked with God and was not, for the Lord took him. Elijah did many great things. When he left, he left Elisha a double portion that Elisha asked for. And how they were taken, miraculous. all that David did and you know David he went down to meet that Rephaim giant that supernatural power giant Goliath was it some of the, the the sayings that I see you know it shows a picture of a giant you know and it shows you know David being little you know sitting there with the sling or something like that said he didn't have to I think this, I, may, I may get this wrong here but said, said he didn't have to know how strong Goliath was because he knew how strong his God was, something like that, something like that. Those are pretty cool. I like those. True though. David had all kinds of problems. Look what happened. Look at all what all David did. He even said, Lord even said he was a man after his own heart. Go on to Solomon. You could just go down through the line. The apostles and the work that they did even to today some of the the preachers even in our time and age and the ones that even came just to even say some of the ones in the, the 20th century where hope everybody knows we're in the 21st right? <laughs> the 20th century some of some of the greatest ones even before that that have come up whose voices and ministries and words ring forth maybe even in a greater impact be even greater than they were when they were alive because they trust they trust in their God. We trust in our God. Amen. Do you? Right now? Do you trust in the Father? First of all, you are you saved walking in the will of God? Or if you went to the right or to the left? Or are you still on that narrow way? It's the only way to be on. The only right way, he said, not to be. He said he would prefer, he would rather you be hot or cold. He doesn't like <laughs> he didn't like the lukewarm. He didn't want the in one minute out the next. He wants you to be like a wave to and fro. Consistency. Amen. He wants consistency. Not hypocrisy, but consistency. To be like Christ. Christ was consistent, was he not? He was not hypocritical by no means. To be a Christian, I'm not saying to be Christ, what Christ like, amen? To show the world that even now, that are going against Christians, the military, the government, and people. Let me tell you something. There again, no surprise. It's going to get worse. Don't fear. Remember. Remember. Do not let that fear pass from you. We don't have that spirit of it. Let it go. Let it pass from you. Let the Lord infill you the spirit of boldness. 
with strength and power knowing that he is behind you. The God of all reality, of all creation. When there was, my goodness, when there was, when there was nothing, he was there and had you on his mind. Even to this point, he knew right to this point what I would be doing and saying in the infinite past when there was nothing except him. He looked in the future and looked at me sitting here right now saying this to you by this video and knew what you were going to be thinking when you watched this video when you did or whenever you do. Hopefully when you do. <laughs> Whoever does. That's our God. And that's even that doesn't even scratch the surface. It gets good as he'll as he'll preacher says it, it gets gooder and gooder as he says. Oh, our God is so great, Amen. I just, you, you, you can't. You, there's no way you can even scratch the surface. Whew. Romans eight and fifteen. For you have not received the spirit of bondage. In me, want you in bondage. Want you in a bondage of fear. Want you in a bondage, oh, this thing going around, it's killing people. And yes, it's killing people. But you know what? They want you to focus on the people that's, oh, people are dying for this. Look over here for the people that have recovered from this. Look at the, the, the things that have come on in the past. The viruses and things. How many people have recovered from that? They're, but you're wanting, they're wanting you to focus on this and people. That's bondage. And we want you in bondage to this or that. To this sin or that sin. We're not to have the spirit of bondage to nothing. We're not receive the spirit of bondage. Again to what? Fear. <laughs> We're not to be in the bondage of fear. Remember. Look down into that gaping maw of chaos. Look at it and say, Jesus. And watch it depart. Watch it shrink. Woo. It says, But we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Father, Father. We've been adopted. We've been grafted in. Hallelujah. That's why we don't have the fear. We, 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 my goodness, we, we're not in bondage to anybody. We are adopted in. We've been grafted in to the family of God. To, we are heirs to the throne of God. No matter what happens down here, look, that's why we said earlier, don't have to worry about no kingdom down here. We're looking for the kingdom to come that we are joint heirs to. We're going to be going in and out as kings and priests. Oh my goodness. You know what? Let everybody else have the kingdoms down here and all the castles, all the whatever they want in the mansions down here. The greatest mansion they can build down here. <laughs> let, let Nimrod have his tower of Babel on the plains of Shinar. Interesting study, by the way. Let them try to reach heaven. Let SpaceX try to reach heaven. <laughs> Much of nonsense. Second Corinthians seven one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. See there's formulas here. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God we're not to have it we're the fear of God talking about a different kind of fear a loving a holiness perfecting holiness in the, the fear of God I mean we shouldn't like cower down in fear to God God being God, I have a reverent fear before God, knowing that if he wanted to, by a mere flash in his eye, he could wipe this total reality away and start over if he wanted to. 
He could have reset history and reality at any time he wanted to, but he didn't. Because he had a plan. Or he had a plan. He knows all the way out to the end of what's going on down here. It's all the way infinity forever and ever and ever. See, there's going to be an end to this course down here. We're going to finish our course. Amen. We're going to keep the faith. Amen. Perfecting holiness and the fear of God. Stop the filthiness of the flesh. Amen. The filthiness of the flesh gets us in trouble. So that oh yeah, perfection of the in the flesh again it's preaching. But no, it's all <laughs> to strive each and every day with the help of God. The help of the Lord through the Spirit that is in us to help cleanse ourselves as the word said we read that again having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves oh, let the spirit help cleanse you praying praying in the Holy Ghost amen cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh because if you let it if you let the flesh run around oh my god yeah it'll get, it'll get filthy I'm, just not, I'm not talking about getting filthy on the outside. Now you can wash the outside, make it shiny and clean, you know. Make it smell all nice. You know, get all trimmed up, get your buzz haircut. <laughs> get y'all showered up, get y'all clean and everything. But the inside, full of dead man's works full of the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye the pride of life and could go through verse after verse of many many things including as I always say I, and I could be an inventor of evil things that always still gets me No, I want to cleanse myself as much as lies within me through the Spirit of God each and every day through the Spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God walking uprightly before the Lord why? because that is His will We'll just say, oh, I want to get saved. And that's all I have to do. Man, you just take care of the rest. I don't have to worry about doing this. You know, I can just walk, you know. It's just, you know, my spirit's not sinning. You know, just let, let the flesh do whatever. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. He cleans up the inside of the cup. And what comes out, the flesh will follow. Perfecting holiness inside it comes out. This flesh you don't want to do anything like that anymore. And he tries to draw you to do stuff like that. But that spirit inside you, the Holy Ghost inside you, you say, no, not anymore. You're not in bondage anymore. The enemy's not got bondage. The enemy can't hold that fear any of you. can't hold that bondage over you anymore. You can look at the chaos coming. You can look at the fear and the oppression and the depression coming over you. So my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. God's got me in His hand. So many promises in the Word of God. I forgot how many. There's been so many people count that. And I've been meaning to do that one, to do, do the count of how many promises there are in the Word of God. I forgot how many. There's a bunch. 
that we have those promises exceeding precious promises but most important if you haven't gotten that promise that free gift of salvation that you can be above all the stuff that we just talked about that spirit of fear that open mouth that pit of chaos that you can look in that people almost look in and go almost crazy looking at things things of the world see a lot of people want to look at the news and that they get their information and that's all they almost read and it almost makes them go almost makes them go crazy stay depressed defeated down almost all the time nothing's ever good they're down and it makes them sick they're sick bodily they're sick spiritually in every way salvation the spirit of God can set you free from every bit of that you not sought the Lord tearfully repentantly now is the time today is the day of salvation if he's calling you drawing you to an altar of repentance where you can be above all this chaos, all this fear. He's calling you. Don't turn him away. Said, so all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's standing there knocking at your heart door. Don't turn him away. Repent from the sins that you've committed. Ask the Lord to come into your heart to save you. And he will come in and take up a boat there and forgive you for your sins. If you back to the Lord, come back to Him before it's everlasting too late. You know you won't serve the Lord. And you need repentance. You need renewal. He's right where you left Him. Come back to Him. All the things that are going on in the world, all the things that are going to come on the world in due time, due season, and they are coming, believe me. For why? Because the Word of God tells me that they're coming seeing every bit of it come to pass right now I implore you don't reject him don't turn him away it's a lot more I could go into but I think that's where the Lord wants it ended right there Remember, if you're saved, you're not up above everybody else and everybody's down here. You're right here with them. But see, you have somebody that you can fall back on that have angels encamped about you. Even though the enemy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego. Said, we're not going to serve your God, Nebuchadnezzar. Said, our God is able to deliver us. And he said, he's going to deliver us. Said, but even, even for some reason, he shouldn't. We're still not going to bow. Because we know we're in his hands. He is going to take care of us. And they were looking at a fiery furnace that once they threw in, immediately when they were going to be thrown in, they, they should have been vaporized. And guess what? They weren't. <laughs> God delivered them. Not even the smell of smoke on them. Just, just what? Just vaporized their bonds. No longer the fear of bondage anymore. We have been made set free from sin, from bondage, from fear, 
from all those things. If you want that, you can have that through the Lord Jesus Christ and his free gift of salvation. Turn to him right now before it's everlasting too late. Amen. Amen. There's more to come. More videos to come. I apologize. Should have been back sooner. Just been a lot going on. Amen. So, we appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Pray for one another. Lift one another up in prayer. And uh, exhort one another. And uh, pray for all the churches, all the ministries. Uh, pray for all the sick and afflicted. And most of all, the backs of the unsaved. That they turn to the Lord and turn back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Amen. Amen. So God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ Jesus on all of you. Don't fear. If you're in the hands of the true and the living God. You can look at the very heart of chaos <laughs> and still claim victory and no fear. Woo! I'm excited about that. that that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Take care, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye now.